Good evening, members of Spiritual Encrypted Encounters on Facebook and on YouTube. How's everybody doing this evening? And uh, for all of those that follow me on TikTok. Uh, before I start off this live feed, I would like to send my co my deepest condolences to my cousins. Uh, they lost their, their, their father today, um, Mr. Ponchito Rodriguez. Uh, my condolences to my cousin uh, Eddie Rodriguez, Fonzo Rodriguez, and all the Rodriguez family from uh, Raymondville, Texas, and wherever they reside. You know, my, my condolences, my deepest condolences. Uh, at this time of uh, a sorrow for y'all, um, I'm here for y'all uh, spiritually. If y'all need me, uh, cousins. Uh, and saying that, you know, uh, as we lose our loved ones, uh, the only thing we have to hold on to is just memories of of the past, you know, uh, in which, you know, it, we really don't pay attention to what's happening around us with, with the loved ones. Uh, we miss out on wisdom and knowledge that they have to offer to to their loved ones uh just like i when i make uh, my life feeds and i talk about all different topics you know i do it you know like for example today you know uh we didn't go out today so i figured uh, i could spend some time here make this video to those who who listen and then really pay attention to to what i'm saying you know uh i remember when i lost my mother many 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 years ago you know and you know when you lose somebody tragically you know uh it affects you for the rest of your life or even if you lose somebody through uh as, as their time finishes on earth you know you're always going to remember them uh just like you know we all have to cross from the flesh to the spirit you know we all have to follow suit in that in that nature you know uh so it's like you have to do the best that you can to try to help your loved ones before you cross over you know that's why i do these videos brothers and sisters uh, i am going to if this might be a long live feed uh, my phone had fallen down and my my lens oh my my phone had gotten cracked so i don't know if you're able to see see me uh with how i look uh, i guess i'll find out <clears throat> after i i do the videos All right, here we go, brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, uh, I got my spiritual uh, necklaces around me, my black tourmaline. I got a smoky quartz a train, uh I believe, uh, calcite, and I got one with all different kinds of minerals. I got my little selenite, selenite sword with me, and I got a... Uh, Some little uh, palm palm stones with rainbows. That are one is the smoky quartz, and I believe this is a, a just a like a clear clear crystal cal calcite, white calcite. It's very very clear. You can see right through it. So I'm keeping this with me uh, for spiritual protection right now. Got me a, another little palm stone. Uh, I'm from the month of Aquarius, and this is what this stands for. So let's get get into to what I wanted to talk about, brothers and sisters. Uh, you know when when we uh, lose our our loved ones, the only thing we have left is just memories. 
you know, and sometimes you lose a lot of the memories throughout time. You know, you 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 remember your loved ones, but at the same time, you know, as as time goes by, we we tend to forget certain uh, experiences or while well, they they were with us within our our, our time. You know, uh, and you know it's it's sad and it happens to to everybody. You know that that uh, sometimes it could be a, a beautiful day, you know, and the way the wind is is blowing or the way it's smelling, it reminds you of something of your past, of your childhood. You know, that happens to me a lot, you know, uh, spiritually. Uh, but like I said, uh, when we lose our loved ones, you know, the only thing we do have with us is just memories, you know, and at times, uh, they do come and visit visit us in spirit, you know, but we have to be careful, you know, because there is a unseen spiritual war that happens, you know, so we have to be careful of what we give power to, uh, because sometimes we get infiltrated that way spiritually. Um, it's happened to me where I got infiltrated uh, back in uh, 2014, 15, where it seemed like it was my loved one that had passed away, uh, looked just like my loved one, uh, was wearing the same clothes, and it looked like my, my loved one that I had lost back in 1985. But the way it was smiling, I could, I could you know, our loved ones cannot come back in the flesh. So whatever it was, was in the form of my loved one. that It took its form, uh, trying to get me to, to find a, a spiritual opening for me to think it, 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 uh, that it was my loved one. But within, me, within myself, as I maintained Love Foundation, I knew that it wasn't, so I did not give it power by believing it was my loved one. Uh, what I started doing is I started praying to our Father, and I started rebuking uh, what I witnessed. And as I was praying to our Father, uh, whatever took manifested to look like my loved one, it took off. Um, whether you want to call them shapeshifters, skinwalkers, uh DDMs, uh, disembodied demonic Nephilim demons. You know, they play those kind of tricks, brothers and sisters, uh, that they do that to see if they can affect you, you know, because when you lose a loved one in a bad way, then they come at you that way uh, spiritually to see if, if, if you're going to weaken because you're going to get flashbacks of the past, you know, what happened. And, and, and that's what they do. They try to find those kind of openings to spiritually attack us, just like they try to do to me. Um, but besides that, you know, as I fought spiritually throughout my life, you know, I learned from those scenarios. Uh, as I learn from those scenarios, one of the things that I do is not fear because I know that, that's what it wants. So I'm not going to give it what it wants. I don't fear it. And I'm not going to, and I don't give it power, no matter what kind of manifestation it takes. I don't give it power by believing in it because I already know what it is, you know, and I'm not going to give power to anything negative in which what I do is I take authority over it in Jesus name. I tie by and rebuke it and send it back to where it came from, you know, uh, within the balance, you know, there's, we all get tested spiritually one way or the other, you know, uh, maybe some have not gotten tested spiritually, but when we do, you better be spiritually prepared because they'll try to, uh, this disembodied demonic Nephilim or demons, whatever you want to call them, they, they love division. They don't want nobody to have love in the heart. They don't want nobody to have love in their life. 
they, they try to eliminate any kind of form of love that you might have because it wants to love uh, to anybody. How are you doing, Brother Eric? We got Sister Car Carrie here. Love, love makes everybody feel great. You know, when you feel loved, uh, uh, whether you have a, a girlfriend, a uh, boyfriend, uh, or you're married, you know, love feels great. And this unseen forces, they don't like happiness. They don't like nobody to have some kind of love within their life. They want, want people to feel sad, to feel unwanted, to have hatred in the heart, vengeance in the heart, brings bad thoughts to their mind because it's trying to bond them, spiritually bond them, so they won't be able to uh, pay attention to what to what's happening around them, but not just around them, what's happening within them, you know? That's how they, they bond. So they they place different scenarios to you to try to find a spiritual opening, you know. We all get tested. Uh, have you ever heard when somebody says it's just like a roller coaster ride? Ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. When I was uh, in the military, single, uh, that's the way it was, you know, is a roller coaster ride. Uh, the reason it was a roller coaster ride for me, because when I was in the military, uh, I wanted to be a certain way, you know, and the way I was in the military as a soldier, you know, I wanted to be ready at all times for any situation or, or anything that would arise uh, as soldier wise combat, you know, I wanted to be ready, prepared. So, you know, I would stay in shape. Uh, I would do a lot of running, uh, run like uh, 20 miles or more a day. Uh, I would lift weights. I was very coordinated, you know, and my, uh, when I was in the military, it was all about the army, you know, uh, I took the job serious. So uh, I really didn't want to bring anybody like, for example, a female to say that will say that she loved me or that I, I loved her. I didn't want to have that kind of uh, burden over me. So uh, I didn't I didn't fall for that. You know, I stayed true to being a soldier. So when I was in the military, it's about me being a soldier and being ready for combat. 24 seven, you know, recon one, you know, that's what it was about. So, you know, whether there was females that crossed my path and I didn't pay attention to them, you know, it's not because I was self-centered. It's just because in my mind, you know, I, I was serving the, the government. So I had to be ready. I, could, I, I couldn't open myself to anybody, especially through love. You know, I had to stay focused on the mission. You know, even though there might have not been a mission, you know, I had to be, my mentality, my, my mentality had to be a hundred percent ready to go. Uh, so I remember when I was in combat, I didn't write anybody, uh, my family members, any, any, any letters. I didn't call anybody, you know, I stayed focused on the mission. You know, uh, when we we're out there, there was no such thing as, uh, I could have wrote in a letter. But like I said, I wanted to stay focused on on the mission because, you know, where I was at, it was in the front line. So I had to be 100% uh, focused and alert, you know. So I didn't have time to, to listen to any kind of problems that might have been happening back home because, you know, I had to stay focused on the mission or what we had to do uh, when I was in Operation Desert Storm. Uh, I think after the the war, when we finally got sent to get ready to to come, the, they were going to deploy us back to to where we came from. Uh, I was going back to Germany. I might have made contact with somebody. I'm not sure. But as for me writing any letters to anybody, I didn't, you know, and 
it's kind of like the spiritual works that I do right now. You know, I, I, I have to stay spiritual ready at all times. You know, being military, I've seen the balance. I've seen the good things and I've seen the bad things. Uh, the job uh, as a soldier, you know, especially you're in the front lines, is you got to handle business. So there's no no love there. So you, that's why when I was in the military, you know, I was like kind of like hardcore. You know, if I would see soldiers uh, getting unfocused because they were worried about their loved ones back home and all this, you know, or worried about what their wives might be doing and stuff like that. I would try to, to get on them, you know, and snap them out of it. And if, even if I had to, to rough, rough somebody up, you know, I had to get them focused on the mission because, you know, the people that are back home, they're okay. You know, they're all, all right. But when your mind starts wandering off and you start thinking many bad things, right? Because then you start losing focus and you're in a, in a, in a area where there's, there's danger and it's a matter of life or death that, that something can happen in any given second. So that's one of the reasons I chose to stay hardcore when I was in the military. Now as a, when I do these videos, you know, uh, spiritual aid, I'm the same way. Same way as I was a soldier in the military, well, I'm a spiritual soldier and I have to stay alert at all times spiritually because when you place yourself out there spiritually, uh, like making these videos, trying to awaken my brothers and sisters uh, to forgive, to maintain love foundation, to maintain love foundation, believe it or not, it's very important to maintain a love foundation. Uh, like I said, when I was in the military, I didn't know what love was because I had to be ready at any given time because what my job title was, what I had to do, you know, it wasn't about me having any kind of mercy or love towards the enemy. It was about handling business, you know. Uh, but now I'm not in the military no more. And I don't know how to fight spiritually in which I don't have to. Nobody has to fight amongst each other that there could be a understanding in between spiritually through a love foundation. Uh, you know, even though people are from different parts of the world, we are all human. Uh, we all have spirits. So we can come to an understanding spiritually, you know. Uh, there's uh, the spiritual battles that I talk about. They, they really exist. You know, I've been getting thrown off uh, this past week uh, dealing with, you know, uh, going playing video games like at, at like they're like uh, like little slot games and stuff like that. This has been throwing me off of my journey and my path, you know, even though I've, I've worked out and all this, you know, uh, I have to get back on track spiritually. You know, uh, that's why I kind of like, I really don't drink too much. You know, if I, if I have a drink, I have one drink or two. But uh, when you place yourself on the line spiritually, you know, you put yourself out there in the open where, as a spiritual warrior, right, or because you have faith, believe in God, that you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested because the unseen forces don't like for anybody to have a, a love foundation, to forgive, uh, to not dwell in anger, <laughs> because when you forgive, all that is out of the out of the window. So they come at you. They come at you 24-7. Uh, yesterday, I was feeling like I had somebody on my shoulders. And my, my neck was stiff. It was hurting so bad. 
Now I know it's kind of fresh outside, but that's what it felt like. It felt like I was carrying somebody on my shoulders and my neck was hurt, hurting so bad. Uh, but the, this, that's when I sense, you know, when I feel stuff like that happening to me, this unseen forces, they can find an opening, right? And they can weigh on you. They can weigh on you spiritually. You're like, why, why is my neck hurting? Or you're like, why is my shoulder hurting? Why is my leg hurting? Why is my back hurting? You start feeling all the things. It's because there's things that are around us. So what we have to do is we have to take authority over it and say, if there's any anything negative around me at this time, uh, I, you're not welcome here. I'm taking authority over you. I tie and bind and rebuke you in Jesus' name. Leave my personal foundation and leave my home. You're not welcome here. Now you have to take authority in that way. Nobody, nobody will know what you've been through. Uh, like what I've been through. Nobody know. Nobody knows what I've been through when I was in the military, and nobody will will know what I've been through spiritually. I mean, I have many stories, but they don't know to what depth of what I've experienced, what I've witnessed spiritually that makes me the person that I am right now. Uh, I have some people that they say, that they see my pictures, they, they don't see nothing. You know, I've seen all your, there's some people say, I've seen all your pictures, I don't see nothing there. It's because sometimes people don't see because they don't want, sometimes people don't see, even though they might see something, but sometimes they cannot see because they're being bonded. So the spiritual gifts of discernment are not there because they might not have faith in the Heavenly Father. They might not have a personal relationship with the Heavenly Father. Or they don't want to believe in the Heavenly Father because they might have had a bad experience or they might have been through something. So they're not open up to Him spiritually. They don't know how to go into prayer. So when they see... Like the pictures that I post, they're not going to see nothing because they're not spiritually uh, connected to the Heavenly Father. And, the, and they don't have the spiritual gifts of discernment to be able to see what's within the pictures. But at the same time, there's a lot of people that see exactly what's within the pictures that I don't have to draw a circle, point an arrow. They know what's within the picture because they see it because they're, they're spiritually gifted. They're spiritually blessed. Uh and, and they can see this, you know. Um, me, I, I don't take it to heart. You know, if, if somebody's got a question of my photos or videos at a place, you know, I'm, I'll am i easily answer whatever they want me to answer, you know. But there are some people that try to approach you in a rude way. But it, those people, I'm not worried about them. The reason I don't worry about them is because those are the ones that I'm trying to awaken, you know. Uh, I'm trying to awaken them, you know, I'm trying to awaken those people, those exact people that say, well, it's a shadow, or they said it's pareidolia, or some say that, there, that there's no God, you know, <laughs> those are the people I'm trying to awaken, bro. all those, all those people are the ones that I'm, I'm targeting spiritually to try to awaken, because once I can, if I can awaken them, then they can free themselves from their bondage they might have upon themselves. You know, because that's what it is, is bondage. When you can't see what's right beside you spiritually or you can't, your senses are not kicking in, you know, because there's something around you. And for example, some of the senses, uh, you, you don't feel the energy, your hairs don't stand up, or you can see spiritually when something passes or goes through the parallel vision. Or you can you you can hear uh, the disembodied voices when they're, they're they're trying to say a message to you. That's when you know those those senses, those spiritual gifts of discernment. Those are the senses that I use when I know that there's something around me spiritually. So when those senses kick in, I go straight into prayer because I know that uh, what I'm sensing is is something that's not good. So I go into prayer automatically but you know in most of my pictures that I've had since the beginning till now 
you see this demonic beings in beastly form. They're there. You know, people people have got to understand that they're not going to look like something like this in the flesh because they can only hold a certain manifestation for a certain period of time. But there are some that can hold a form for, for, for a while. But if you're spiritually blessed and you have, you have the spiritual gift of discernment, you're going to be able to see through that manifestation. People want to call it a cloak. You're going to be able to see through the cloak of its true nature because your maternal love foundation, just listen to what I'm saying. Your maternal love foundation, you have forgiven. You're not dwelling in anger and hatred and fear. So you closed all the openings that it could, uh, the sun supports can use to bond you, right? So you're going to start awakening and you, you start, you're going to start getting spiritually blessed with his gifts that you're going to be able to see or ID what's around you spiritually. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, an amazing spiritual gift to have, brothers and sisters. It's an awesome, awesome gift. You know, uh, I always get contacted by people uh, that said that they're going through something, you know. And I try to help them out spiritually, you know. When when somebody's going through something spiritual, you know, sometimes they already know. They they know what might be the opening that they have that's that's causing them to have the problems that they have. It's just that when you're being overwhelmed by negativity, that it starts bonding you. That you're not you're not able to free yourself from that bondage. You know that it takes. Somebody to come, a spiritual person to come and and pray for you, and, and 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 go to your home, do a cleansing, get rid of any kind of negative attachments attachments that are within your house. That's what they do. They infest, right? They've said you have an opening. They can come and infiltrate in your home. They can be hiding in the darkest place or. Your home doesn't seem the same no more. It feels darker. Have y'all ever experienced that? When certain parts of your home that at one time were bright, they seem dark when you go in there. And you're like, why is it so dark? And, you know, you might have the light on, but it's still dark in there, right? It's because that's called uh, they're invading your home and they've taken a stronghold within your house. So what you have to do is... Cleans your home, right? Uh, many people, you know, cleans in many ways. Me, I like to either place holy water or olive oil, like in, in cross form shapes, on the in every entrance of the home, uh, front door, back door, any windows, uh, closets, anything that has a door or or it's a passageway. I'll place a heavenly cross and. When I start going into prayer, you know, as I go, since the energies out of the rooms, they, uh, the unseen forces that are infiltrating, they reveal themselves uh, to me. And at times I could see them moving uh, rapidly in, uh, in shadow form, jumping from, from room to room, trying to hide from me. Uh, and as I keep on praying and and I start calling upon it that it needs to leave those premises that it's not welcome there. And, you know, and if I have to take me further measures, uh, doing things spiritually to, to cast it out, I will, you know, and, and one of the main things is when you tie binary rebuke it in Jesus name and it finally leaves, once it leaves, it can't come back in, you know, not unless somebody within their household a member of the hustle has a spiritual opening. But when I do the cleansings, whatever negativity is within those rooms that are dark, they become light because it has left 
a stronghold over the homes, you know, and, and that's just the home, but it could be a person. It leaves the, the house or leaves the vessel in which there, there'll be a, a, a big change of, of sensing the environment around you. There might be a change, a big change within themselves. They feel lighter. They don't feel overwhelmed. Uh, their house feels safe. You know, the, the room that was the darkest within the household is very light now that you can see everything within the room because the negative energy that was there is gone, you know. In that sense of a way, when I go out there to Mother Nature, you know, those, those, those energies are out there because that's where they dwell, right? The woods or wherever. And they come. Because they know they can see the light within me and the light without uh, out of me, so they come, they come, and they show the presence uh, to me. And the reason that they show the the presence to me in beastly form, which w looks like like werewolf, like in Thorpe, uh, a beastly form that they show, they use that for a fear factor to see if you're going to be afraid. Or if they make a growling sound, they'll, they'll do that to see if you're going to have a spiritual opening of, of fear. Or they manifest themselves to show you somewhat of a form that, that you might think it's the flesh, but it's not of the flesh because it's in between, right? Between two dimensions. So you're going to be able to see something, you know. People want to say it's a shadow. Well, it's a, it's a spirit, you know. What are shadows? It's spirit. It's a spirit. So it's going to manifest in spirit form that you're going to be able to see something. Just like in the pictures, I can see them right off the bat. You know, I don't have to uh, crop a, a picture very small. I can see what's within the pictures that I, that I place. When I look, when I do take the screenshot, I can already see it. So, you know, I've, I've been dealing with this unseen forces for a very long time. You know, that... I'm able to identify them spiritually. That's a gift that I have to offer uh, that I can go to any location. It doesn't matter what the location is, and I'll be able to sense spiritually if there's some unclean spirits there or demonic spirits because they'll show themselves to me or they'll try to come at me like they always do. Uh, try to drain my energy or try to come at me because they dislike a love foundation. They dis dislike Brother Abe's love foundation. Uh, they dislike Brother Abe's uh, spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ. So they show themselves uh, to me. Uh, for the doubters or people that, 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 that doubt of what I'm talking about. You're more than welcome. If you ever pass through Temple, Texas, you're more than welcome to contact me through Messenger. You know, uh, and I'll take you to some of these locations so you can witness it for yourself. Uh, the only thing is, if I do take you to these locations, because I already know what's there, is, you know, I just don't want nothing to happen to anybody, you know. So I would suggest if you do decide to have a little, how should I say, show and tell time with uh, Mr. Sias, that I just say that you'll be spiritual ready. Because if you have a spiritual opening because of the path that you're on, they're going to use that to the fullest to come up against you. Uh, but that's because you're hanging with me and that's, that's what I have to deal with daily. You know, maybe if you would go by yourself to the location, maybe you might not see many things, or you might not hear many things uh, when you go by yourself. But if I'm around, these things, you know, they, they show themselves, whether it's through disembodied uh, spirit form, disembodied voices, uh, you're going to hear that kind of activity. And if you don't hear that activity, when you, if you're going live to record 
when you replay your your uh, video, listen to very closely because they're going to be talking different languages within uh, the footage because that's what they do, whether it's Latin or whatever languages they speak, right? It'll be within the video. But I have taken a break uh, from uh, being out there doing those spiritual works. Uh, it's been about a month now that I haven't been out there. You know, today was a burial of the persons. The person they found out there was today. So maybe I'll be able to go sometime this week, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, I, I, when I do go, I want to make sure I'm spiritual ready to be able to go out there because the last time that I went out there, I was kind of being overwhelmed by a lot of things that were around me. Uh, where I watched the video, I had the Selenite sore with me. Uh, so yes, there was a lot of activity out there. Like I said, you know, somebody can watch my videos. Somebody can watch the screenshots that I take. You know, I'm, I was thinking of going back through all my videos to see, to take a closer look, to see if I catch any more footage within those videos, you know. Uh, but, you know, or I can go back out there, you know. Uh, all I know is, it is not a good feeling when your your energy gets drained, or it's not a good feeling when you start feeling pain <laughs> uh, after coming from an investigation. You know, you start feeling pain like on your leg, on your neck area, your shoulder, your back, because that's what they do. They, they they attack. You know, they attack the vessel and the spirit. You know, that's what they do. So you're gonna feel all kinds of a certain way, you know, you're not going to be feeling fine and dandy or a hundred percent. You're not going to feel the same way when you enter the area. You're going to feel different when you come out of the area, but that's what they do. You know, they, they, if they can overtake you and, uh, attack your flesh to possess, then they attack the spirit, right? That's what they do. Um, the reason I'm talking about this is because, this is the real deal. What's around us, you know, it's not. It doesn't have to be just just the woods. It's around us everywhere. It doesn't matter where we're at. You know, it's about like I say, maintaining that love foundation because that's the key. That as you maintain the love foundation, that's the key for you to be able to overcome uh, a spiritual attack through a love foundation and. If you have to call upon the Heavenly Father, pray against whatever is around you spiritually, and tie it by the rebuke him in Jesus' name. You know it's, it's it's important that you always bring Jesus into the picture because they know who He is. <laughs> Trust me, they know who Jesus Christ is because I tell you what, it doesn't matter if it's took in the form of a loved one. It doesn't matter if it's took in form of a shapeshifter, a native, or it doesn't matter if it's took in the form of a dog man, a Bigfoot, the, a goat man, a shadow figure, a uh, inc incubus or succubus form, a mist form. They know who they know who Jesus Christ is. So when you bring Jesus into the picture and you tie by the rebuke in Jesus' name, they'll be gone uh, like in a blink of an eye. They disappear. They fade away. Because when you tie binary vehicle, they go back to wherever they came from, where they, whatever realm they came from, the hell realm, you want to call it the hell realm, the Sinai realm, they go back to where they come from because that's how great the power of uh, the Heavenly Father is. Jesus, right? He's that strong. Even they know who he is uh, and they bow down, they kneel down. Uh, to him, uh, Satan kneels down to him, and anything dealing with uh, Satan kneels down to them. But they come and attack us. They come and attack us because we're here in the flesh. 
uh, if we were in spirit form with a pure love foundation, then we'll be angels, right? To we'll be able to fight spiritually and as angelic angels. Uh, but they know, they know since we're here in the flesh, they attack us. We're God's children, so they're gonna try to attack us. You know, some people say, Well, how come God hasn't done this or that? You know, there's a lot of cleansing that has to be done in this world, brothers and sisters. And when that happens, uh, that the cleansing comes, it's when. Jesus Christ is going to come back to earth and deal with it, with anything unclean, anything unholy. Uh, everything's going to change that we're all going to be in spirit. You know, it's going to be a complete spiritual cleansing that everybody's going to lose the flesh. It's when we're going to get judged at that time. I only see two people here. Uh, I've been talking for uh, for about an hour, I think. Um, I know I always get questions. You know, uh, people always ask me. I answer the questions to the best of my ability. You know, whatever questions they ask me. Uh, uh, I was I was working. Was talking to an individual. Uh, dealing with what I witnessed when I was growing up and they, they shared a story with me. You know, I, I'm not going to talk about it yet, but it is dealing with that giant bird that, that was attacking people in South Texas. And I was, you know, talking to the individual and let them know. They told me what happened to them. Then I told them what happened to me and what I witnessed. So that's where we're at right now. Which And, you know, I give them a certain location where I witnessed, uh, where I experienced what I experienced. But, you know, when somebody gets spiritually attacked by this unseen forces, you know, it affects a person for the rest of their lives, you know, because it's something that, that they'll never forget. It's kind of like when people talk, tell me about the, Missing 401 cases of children. Excuse me, I'm going to drink a little bit of water real quick. Of, uh, of children. I remember what happened to me. When it was a midnight mass and I had, they had that, uh, the sense incense and I couldn't breathe and I passed out. You know, I, black, I passed out and I hit the back of my head. I remember waking it up. They had me up in the air and they were putting uh, olive oil on my forehead, you know, saying that the devil, this and this and that, you know, it was a Catholic church. So I went outside and I was standing outside and that's when I heard somebody say something to me from a distance and I seen them waving behind a tree, you know. I guess at that time I must have been like in, I would say, like in third or fourth grade. And I could see somebody waving at me, like calling me to go to where they were at, but I, I ignored them. So as I stood there, then I seen them walking down the sidewalk. As they got close to me, I knew it wasn't a person. You know, when people tell me, well, that's just a shadow, but guess how they're going to look? I've seen a dark shadow, silhouette, a dark shadow, no flesh, just a dark silhouette standing right in front of me and talking to me. This is what they told me. They told me, don't don't listen to what the, the man is saying, which was a priest. And I said, don't, don't believe on the man that's up there on the wall. Then he, he looked at me, the shadow, like, you know, I would say demonic being, uh, told me to believe in him, you know. So I'm looking at him, and I said, I believe in, in Jesus. And he said, come with me now. Come with me. You know, he wanted me to, to follow him. And I said, I believe in Jesus. When I said I believe in Jesus, 
is when I heard my mom say, who are you talking to? So I look at her, and when I went to point, that dark shadow being, whether it's a demonic being, unclean spirit, whatever you want to call it, it was going behind the tree, the tree that it was calling me to. So my mom grabbed me when we followed it. And she's, I seen you go behind the tree. You better come up from behind that tree. So she went around the tree. There was nobody there. And we searched. She went, she had me from the hand, you know, and we searched around the, the parish hall, went all the way around the church to the same spot where I was standing. And she said, I Maria Purissima, which means Holy Mary, Mother of God. She did the sign of the cross. Because she knew at that time that it was something evil, you know, and even her hair stood up, you know. Uh, that's what her spiritual senses told her. Well, in that sense of a way, you know, I was a kid at the time. So I could see how these demonic spirits that manifest to whether it's a shadow figure, whether they manifest into a person, uh, whether they manifest into a, an animal, like a a uh, dark dog, a dark cat with red eyes, or they're manifesting whatever form they manifest, I can see how they can lure somebody by befriending them, like pretending to be their friend, right? Like, that's what they tried to do, try to pretend that you're friend. So basically what I'm saying is, I believe of what happened to me, of what I witnessed, and not just what happened to me, what happened to my son and my friend's daughter, is that I believe this, this, this somebody to man in Ephraim have the ability to manifest and take a person through a tree, listen to me, to a tree portal, a tree portal that they go into another realm. And that's what they're using. That's why when they go searching for people in the woods, they cannot find them because they're taking them through tree portals. They're using the trees as a, a energy to to open up the portal to go through the tree. So if a person gets befriended by them and they follow them, well, they take them to another dimension to their realm. Uh, just like what happened to my son and my friend's daughter, they were standing by a tree near, there was a tree right in front of them. You know, when they were hypnotized, there was a tree right in front of them. So I believe that that's what they do. They use trees as portals uh, to, to try to take people they've deceived. I'm not going to say befriend or friend. I'll say deceived. You know, that's what they've been doing for, for centuries. You know, you hear it where... It doesn't necessarily have to be a tree, but the there could be a wall. There could be a, something that has some kind of energy, but where the portal is, that they they can they can take somebody through there. Uh, you no, know, when I was thinking about that, or what happened to me, uh, to my son, and all these people, this four hundred one cases of missing children, I believe that's what they're doing. What they're using, you know, is deceiving people like that. And using that as, as so they disappear and they can find a trace because they're taking them to a different dimension. If y'all remember correctly, brothers and sisters, I said that Jesus had gone to hell to get his his people from hell, right? So what the, what is that saying? That he, he went to hell to get his people? Is that that their spirits that have been taken in this manner, like I said, through the hell realm portals, 
and the, the spirits are good spirits, and they need to be saved. And Jesus has done that before in the past. That is, through a love foundation, he was able, he's a chosen one, right? He was able to go into the, into hell itself and save those, those, those good spirits. How did they wind up there? Because they've got deceived, right? That's how they went up there. They got taken. They got taken spiritually. And, uh, you know, I just, I just remember a lot of things like this, you know, uh, where people disappear, you know, I, I try to, I follow my, my heart, my spirit. I got a good heart, you know, and when I hear that somebody's missing or, you know, I try my best to, to help out, uh, to see I can locate them, you know, uh, I follow my spiritual senses to guide me, to take me to location where somebody might be. You know, you hear it all the time, you know, and it's not just portals. There's, there's some evil people in this world that kidnapping children. They're kidnapping people. And that's in their nature, you know, some evil people. Uh, and that exists also, you know, so we that's why I work out just in case. I don't know when I go out there and do my spiritual videos. You know, I work out daily, Monday through Friday. Uh, and, you know, I stay physically ready and spiritual ready because anything can happen, you know. Anything can happen and, and uh, this unseen forces come at you in many ways. So that's why you have to stay spiritual ready, physical ready. And just be aware of your surroundings at all times. I think everybody's uh, kind of hiding right now from the cold, cold weather. I don't see that many people here right now on spiritual encrypted encounters. But uh, there's a smoky quartz right here. There's a rainbow in this one right here. You all can see the rainbow there. Uh, this one's got a rainbow also. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. It's got a rainbow right in there. So I'm going to do the sign of the cross right now. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Say a little prayer. Heavenly Father, at this time, I would like to pray for me and all my family members, for you to place how many crosses, not just my family members, for all the viewers here on Spiritual Crypto Encounters and those that have faith, for you to bless us with spiritual crosses from our head to toes and to protect us from any unseen forces that are around us. Uh, we take authority over you in Jesus' name. You're not welcome in my foundation, any you know, woke up in nobody's foundation. You know, woke up in our homes. Uh, we tie, bond, rebuke you in Jesus' name. Leave. Uh, we're taking authority over you in Jesus' name. Leave now. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. But I don't want to keep you all too long, brothers and sisters. There was just a, a video that I just wanted to make real quick. Uh, stay strong. My brothers and sisters, uh, never lose faith, never lose hope. Uh, continue to to thrive with the Love Foundation, and God will make things happen to you spiritually as He spiritually blesses you. Uh, many good things will come to you, uh, and you will feel a a. a change in atmosphere a shift a shift a change when you have a love foundation you know everything changes around you but anyways thank you all for tuning in god bless every single one of y'all uh love light and blessings and peace out